When you are kidnapped, you may scream and struggle, but this way doesn't work. Instead, it will enrage the kidnappers. But this girl, she dealt with her kidnapper with composure and calmness. Even though she was violated and kidnapped, she still saved herself. Anjan, please. This is a movie based on true events. It will show you the self-rescue experience of a brave girl. The girl's name is Lisa and she is a minor. After violating her, the kidnapper did not release her. He covered Lisa's eyes with a piece of cloth and threatened her to keep quiet. The kidnapper is taking Lisa home. The car was speeding down the road as Lisa tried to regain her calm. Yelling and struggling were useless. She had to protect herself in more effective ways. After about 10 minutes, the car stops. Even though Lisa's eyes were blindfolded, but through what was left of her vision, Lisa could see the color of the carpet. She is also able to remember how many stairs she has traveled by counting them. It is the clue that she can get a hold of, but it's not enough. Lisa continues to look up and observe. She can see the size of the kidnapper and the fact that his usual hand is left-handed. Suddenly, the kidnapper orders Lisa to take off her clothes. Lisa can only do as he says, and she is pushed into the bathroom by the kidnapper. The kidnapper's rough movements made Lisa keep taking deep breaths, and she was afraid that she would be hurt. The kidnapper asked her to close her eyes and press them against the wall. He did not allow Lisa to know her appearance until Lisa's body is rinsed off. The kidnapper pins her to the floor. Lisa is again violated by the kidnapper. She felt heartbroken. Soon, the kidnapper put Lisa on the bed. His gun roams over Lisa's thighs. The fear continues to magnify in order to get a chance to escape. Lisa plans to please the kidnapper first. She keeps stroking the kidnapper's face, and she can feel the beard on his face. The kidnapper's physical features also became an important clue. Lisa's behavior is effective, and the kidnapper relaxes his guard. He even makes a sandwich for Lisa. However, the TV is broadcasting the news of Lisa's disappearance, and the kidnapper's emotions are once again on edge. He blames Lisa's family for calling the police and once again will bind her hands. Although the trust that had just been built crumbles, Lisa doesn't give up. With her continuous pleading, Lisa was given a chance to use the restroom. Lisa says she needs a little privacy and hopes the kidnappers can wait outside the restroom. Lisa's disguise convinced the kidnapper to trust her. When the restroom door closes, Lisa quickly pulls off the cloth covering her eyes. First, she locks the restroom door, then looked around the restroom. Although she can't find any chance to escape, Lisa looks at herself in the mirror. She encourages herself not to give up. Up. Soon Lisa leaves her fingerprints on the mirror. She also do the same on the toilet door, toilet bowl and many other locations. This would prove that Lisa had been here. Finally Lisa is squatting on the floor and observing the kidnapper's shoes. The logo and size of the shoes will be clues. When the kidnapper realizes that Lisa has unlocked the door, he is thunderstruck. He chokes Lisa and keeps questioning her. Lisa once again shows her softer side. She pours a glass of water for the kidnapper and reassures him not to be angry. The water seems to curb the kidnapper's anger and he slowly calms. Down Datsu and the kidnapper fell asleep. It is a good opportunity. Lisa kept groping around the room until she found the phone. She couldn't wait to call the police. Suddenly the kidnapper put a gun to Lisa's head. Her plan failed again. And it seems that the kidnapper won not trust Lisa anymore. Resourceful Lisa starts to lie. She lied that her dad was sick and she was very worried. She just want to tell her dad that she is safe. It would make the police give up their search. Lisa cried as she told the story. The image of a good daughter softened the kidnapper's heart. He trusts Lisa again and tells her to go back back to bed. Lisa even asked the kidnapper to lie down on her body as she played the role of a girlfriend. When the kidnapper's eyes are focused on Lisa, she throws her hairbrush under the bed. Everything she has done is to create an opportunity to escape and leave important clues. But unfortunately, accidents happen. The news continue to broadcast the news of Lisa's disappearance. The kidnapper realizes that Lisa's family has not let the police stop their search at all. He tells Lisa to get dressed and rudely ties Lisa's hands. Lisa knows she is in great danger, but she can only obey the kidnapper. Three days after being kidnapped, Lisa finally left her kidnapper's house. She was sitting in her car, and she didn't know where the end was. Soon, Lisa feels the car stop. The kidnapper is going to refuel the car and he warns Lisa to stay quiet in the car. Lisa tries to leave her mark on the car. She bites her finger and smears blood on the car seat. The car starts again, and the kidnapper's destination is a deserted park. He loses his patience because he knows that the police are looking for Lisa day and night. The kidnapper intends to kill Lisa. The kidnappers put Lisa on her knees and point a gun at her head, despite being on the edge of life and death. Lisa did not give up. She keeps pleading with the kidnapper and tries to make him remember the events of the past few days. Lisa's obedience and image of a good daughter made the kidnapper memorize her. Eventually he gives up on killing Lisa and even loosens the rope that was helping her hands. But she asks Lisa to give the police false leads, describing him as a short, muscular black man. Lisa agrees. Soon she hears the car moving away from her until there is no more movement. She rips off 
off the cloth covering her eyes. She looks at the free sky and cries aloud. However, the kidnapper sees Lisa running in the rear view mirror and he suddenly regains his senses. He thinks Lisa will tell the police his true information. He quickly changes direction and rushes towards Lisa. Lisa didn't he look back. She kept running forward. Very fortunately, a police car on patrol appears and the kidnapper has to give up his plan. He gets very annoyed and keeps pounding on the steering wheel. After a long run, Lisa returns home. Lisa's arrival doesn't make her family happy. They even try to beat Lisa because they feel that Lisa has run away from home. Lisa cries and explains to her grandmother, who does not believe her. She calls the police to tell them that Lisa has not been in any accidents and has returned home safely. Lisa couldn't he believe that her family was making her more desperate than the kidnappers. I can't he understand Lisa's family's attitude at all through Lisa's memories. We can get the answer. When Lisa was a child, her mom and dad had divorced. Mom was not capable of taking care of her to daughters, and Lisa was sent to her grandmother's house. Grandma didn't like Lisa. She even condoned her boyfriend to violate Lisa. Lisa was not yet an adult, but she was no longer in school. She worked every day in a restaurant that was open 24 hours a day. Because the night shift paid more, she often worked late into the night. This is why Lisa would be kidnapped and violated. The grandmother lied to the police because she was afraid that Lisa would tell them about her boyfriend's crimes. Since Lisa was underage, the police asked her to go to the police station to explain the situation. Lisa knew the opportunity had come. She wanted to make sure that all the people who hurt her are punished. Lisa sits in front of the police and calmly tells her story. The clues she has formed a complete map, enough for the police to arrest the kidnappers. Unbelievably, the policeman is also suspicious of Lisa. He thought Lisa had a composure and calmness that a female minor shouldn't have. The policeman's skepticism sent Lisa into a meltdown and they can't continue the conversation. Soon, two female police officers arrive at the office. They continue to ask questions based on the clues Lisa has provided. Lisa recalls the color of the carpet, the facial profile of the kidnapper, and many more details. The clues are so clear. But the two police officers ask Lisa, do you watch a lot of TV programs? Obviously, they didn't believe Lisa either. They think Lisa is lying about her running away from home. Lisa's emotions begin to spiral out of control and she doesn't understand why everyone is acting with malice. Lisa curls up on the couch. She is speechless in another office. The police officers are also having a heated discussion. This is because there is a serial murder case that has been going on for three months and is still unsolved. All the victims had been assaulted and then shot. The clues match what Lisa said. The Sheriff decides to talk to Lisa, and like the other cops, he keeps his faith in Lisa. He keeps reassuring Lisa and encouraging her to recall more details. The car, the gun, the shoes with the kangaroo logo. Lisa provides more and more clues, and even says she has left her fingerprints at the kidnapper's house. The sheriff wants to do a physical on Lisa, but they have to get permission from the family. However, it is Lisa's grandmother's boyfriend who answers the phone. He refuses the sheriff's request, even ordered them to let Lisa go home. His attitudes make the police suspicious. The police continue to to question Lisa. Finally, she confessed that she had been assaulted by her grandmother's boyfriend. The police arrest him and Lisa moves out of Grandma's house yet with the kidnappers at large. Lisa's nightmare is tea over. She wakes up every night and screams at the top of her lungs. She was terrified that the kidnappers would come for her. The sheriff arranged a safe house for minors to protect Lisa. There was a police officer on duty. There 24 hours a day and no one could hurt Lisa. The investigation went on day after day and the police had more clues. They drew a picture of the kidnapper through Lisa's description. Lisa also overcame the psychological barrier and returned to the crime scene again. She closed her eyes to feel the flow of time and speculated at the time of the kidnapper's travel. Soon, they found the park. From that day on, the police kept patrolling the neighborhood. Eventually, they saw the suspect and took pictures. The last step required Lisa to identify the murderer. There are six photos in total. Lisa carefully recognized and finally found the kidnapper. The police acted immediately and apprehended the kidnapper. The police find Lisa's blood in his car. They go back to the kidnapper's house. The hairpin under the bed, the fingerprints in the toilet, and the kangaroo logo shoes are found one by one. The kidnapper also confessed his crime to the police. Until that time, most people believe Lisa. The sheriff brings the good news to Lisa and invites her to meet all the police officers. The policemen give Lisa a big round of applause because she uses her heaviness and calmness to help the police catch the kidnapper. The serial murder case that had been troubling them for three months was also successfully solved. Lisa became a marvelous hero after the case is over. Lisa goes to her aunt's house to start a new life. She is well protected and no one ever hurts her again. Years later, Lisa becomes a police officer who fights sex crimes. She works to protect minors. Although terrible things happen to Lisa, kidnappers and people with malicious intent do not break her down. Instead, she uses her composure and calmness to fight for her survival and provides useful clues for the police to solve the case. She is a brave heroine. The movie is based on true events and is titled Believe Me The Abduction of Lisa McVeigh. I hope you like it.